All right, so let's continue with the last part, which is synchronization. So if you look at uh, many applications like Dropbox, OwnCloud, and whatever other kind of synchronization happens between a server and a mobile device, then you have to deal with several issues. Issue number one is that you have intermittent connectivity, so your transfers may be just interrupted. And even if you're uh, offline basically by design, um, then somebody else might update part of your uh, Dropbox folder while you're offline and you won't be uh, able to immediately see the changes. The other problem is that the bandwidth on mobile is again still limited. We already discussed this in a lot of detail. So it's not possible to just copy many gigabytes of data would also exceed the storage available on most mobiles and for that reason we need some kind of adaptive synchronization. So here's a bit of background from database theory, the so-called CAP theorem and this says that if you have any kind of networked shared data system you can only have two out of three properties, which is consistency, that means uh, all uh, existing copies of the data are always uh, synchronous with, with each other, um, availability of that data, so you can always access it, and um, tolerance to network partitions. That, this is where C, A and P come from. So in this case, network partitions means that you have um, disconnected uh, subnetworks. They may, there may be connectivity within the subnetwork, but there is no way to send data to uh, the other subnetwork. And a single device which doesn't currently have a data connection, a single mobile device, is in this sense uh, a tiny network partition on its own. And again, so the CAP theorem provably states that you can only always, uh, only ever have two out of three here. So how does this relate to Dropbox? Uh, what follows is that we can have uh, three different combinations, uh, consistency and availability, availability and partition tolerance, or partition tolerance and consistency. And the combination which actually applies to Dropbox in this case is availability and partition tolerance, um, meaning that you will always be able to access the data even if you're offline and it will also work um, uh, that it will also work if you're offline basically. Um, what's missing is consistency of course. Um, how is this handled in Dropbox? Uh, maybe you want to pause here and think about it for a moment. Um, <coughs> consistency is handled within Dropbox well, as by the CAP theorem, it can't be guaranteed. But uh, for example, if you have conflicting updates, then you will simply get a second copy of um, of your data and will have to sort out yourself which one the right one is. To uh, complete this, let's look at what other combinations, what the other combinations uh, look like. So consistency and availability is something like a traditional database, especially a cluster database um, distributed across many servers. And when connections in that cluster fail, then the whole database is offline. So it's not tolerant to network partitions. And uh, the third combination, consistency and partition tolerance, it, is not as widely used. So there are some distributed databases uh, which try to follow this principle, but it's not that common. So the approach here would, for example, be to um, disable partitions or ignore partitions which are in the minority. Of course, then the question is how to um, how to actually detect that. But this is not the, the main topic here. Okay, so now let's look into how to actually transfer the data. So there's the so-called RSync algorithm. RSync is a Unix tool from 1996, so already 20 years old. And the idea is uh, that you want to synchronize 
two files which are similar uh, over a slow communication link. The idea now is that you uh, split the file into blocks which all have the same size, fixed size, and calculate a checksum, c1, c2, and so on. Uh, and then you just send the checksums to your uh, synchronization peer and based on the checksums you can then decide which blocks you actually need to transmit. Um, maybe you want to think briefly about what the issues here are. Well, the this works as long as the blocks are there where you expect them. So if you have maybe something like a log file where data is only appended at the end ever, then this will work. But if we now insert some data at some point into the file, then the following blocks will of course shift. Um, so this is still the content from block 2, from block 3 and so on. Uh, problem is, if I now calculate the checksum over this new file at node B, then the checksum will still be calculated based on the old positions. So that will, will of course then cause all checksums except the one for block one to mismatch, and a lot of data would have be uh, would have to be transferred. Um, and the uh, really intelligent solution offered by the rsync algorithm is a so-called rolling checksum. Um, and this means that you can uh, basically go through the entire file and uh, calculate the checksum for every possible offset in just one pass. This is a so-called sliding window approach. Um, we have a block size, we have the actual values, um, the checksum itself and the offset and um, the result then simplified looks uh, like this. So um, we uh, slide this checksum window basically over the data and get results for every possible off offset at the same time. Um, and while this rolling checksum is calculated, um, we look into the uh, checksum list we received from the synchronization partner. Um, this doesn't contain all possible checksums, but only one checksum for each block. And this makes it possible that I can still transfer only a small amount of data and then that I can also make a, a fast search via hash table. And if I've now found a match, then I can um, actually verify this with a second checksum, something like MD5, to make sure that it's really the same block. And uh, if there's actually no match, then this was a false positive and I still need to transmit the block. Um, so to recapitulate, uh, both um, synchronization partners uh, calculate this uh, rolling checksum, but one of them will only pick one checksum the central one basically per block and uh, if this block now exists on the other side then the same checksum will still appear even if the block has shifted and so then if that original checksum is somewhere in the list of the ones I have received from the other side then I know that this block now uh, exists on both sides even uh, if it has shifted by some offset. Um, this is very widely used, uh, actually even by Dropbox, uh, because it's so convenient um, and it's also suitable for things like backups where you can then save space because you only have to tr uh, uh, transfer deltas of data again and not save everything uh, for, the, for the next backup. So uh, finally let's briefly look into what issues appear with even this kind of synchronization. So even uh, rsync, which lisa uses a lot less data, still needs a, s a stable connection. So if one um, device is offline in the middle, then you will basically have to restart the synchronization. Or uh, if two nodes make 
changes uh, at the same time while they are in different network partitions, then you will get so-called merge conflicts. Uh, these are also uh, known from, from version control systems, of course, um, and they can sometimes be resolved using a so-called uh, three-way merge algorithm. Um, if the changes don't conflict with each other, then you can uh, use the data from the original um, version, the first change, and the second change, to create a merged one. But this, of course, only works for things like source quote and plain text. It won't work for word files, for images, um, and of course that's a bit of a problem because this is what many people actually put in Dropbox and then again you will get a conflicted copy or something which is then the only way to l let the user deal with the merge conflict. All right, so this was rather brief. I'm sorry, I assume I've been talking a little faster here than I would have in a real lecture, but as a, as a stopgap, I hope it's um, sufficient. And yeah, thanks for listening.